Hello, you are welcome. You are welcome onto my channel today, and it gives me great joy to observe you are viewing this video. I am Dr. Lanika Kone. I am a sociologist. I am a researcher. I'm a public speaker. I'm a lecturer in the university. I'm a life coach. Welcome. Meanwhile, if you have not subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? Kindly go ahead and subscribe to this channel. It will do you enormous good. Tap the subscribe button on your screen right now. Click the subscribe button on your screen right now and join my family of subscribers and viewers. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, if you have subscribed previously, thank you very much for staying tuned. In this video today, I want to address another qualitative method of data collection, key informant interview, key informant interview, K-I-I. Meanwhile, I dropped a, a, a video earlier, immediately before this, on in-depth interview, I-D-I, -I. and I promise I will drop a video on key informant interview and this is the video as a matter of fact for you to enjoy this video you must view the one on idi because they are like flip sides they are like twins you know because they, they share semblance but only lead to different and what is this difference the difference is the personality you are interviewing idi and KII are essentially the same except for the personality you are interviewing or personality being interviewed. That's why one is only in-depth interview. One is key informant interview. Key informant interview is a qualitative method of data collection that enables you, that allows you to gather in-depth, detailed, deep, comprehensive data from a very strategic, from a very important informant or important interviewee on a particular subject matter, on a particular issue. While in-depth interview is only a method of data collection that allows you to gather data information in greater detail in greater detail key informant interview adds another element that means key informant interview is in-depth interview conducted with or for a very important interviewee a very important person that we can consider as an informant. This person is considered an informant because he has very important information that no other person can give you. Yeah. In that interview can be conducted with maybe a random individual in a community to be able to understand the nuances in the community in greater detail. But a key informant interview must be conducted with somebody that is very important, very strategic, very, very, very key. <laughs> That's where the word key comes from. Key means a special, a strategic, and important person on that particular issue. That's where the key comes from. Key informant. This informant that is key, that is very important that is very strategic, that is very central to the issue, that if you hear from this person, wow, you must have been seen to have heard from the most important person. So your work is done. For example, if you are conducting um, a, a interview or a research on arm robbery or gangsterism, definitely, you can conduct an in depth interview with maybe gang members. But by the time you are conducting interviews with gang leaders number one in all the gangs in those communities then this interview with the number one the most the commander then becomes key informant interview 
but the ones who conduct with ordinary community members who are not gang members even that can only be in that interview and on the same interview on gangsterism in the particular community this scenario i'm painting the examples i'm using now the example i'm using now you know really when you are talking to the chief i mean inspector general of police of police in the same on the same matter they are doing key informant interview because ig can keep because all the reports come to the table of the inspector general of police or if you are talking about metropolitan police the most senior officer there or you are talking about uh, the commander in charge of anti-gang anti-gangsterism then you're talking about key informant interview or you want to understand epidemic in a particular community then when you're talking to to more not saying mothers then you will be talking about in-depth interview but when you're talking to the the king the traditional rulers the chief medical director of the ex center Definitely, you, you are doing key informant interview. It's better for me to break this down, or you before so that you can understand. Because many people miss this, and it's a big problem. I've read reports, I've read theses, and says that people just don't understand. Even I've examined theses before for 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 students, uh, for people who want to defend their PhD, even PhD for for, for as 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 seriously as serious as that. And you simply ask somebody defending a PhD. What is the difference between in-depth interview and key informant interview? And they just simply go blank. Or they say gibberish. Or you simply ask, I was conducting an examination recently for people defending their project, and I simply ask, what is in-depth interview? Why did you use in-depth interview? Why did you, why didn't you use key informant interview? And they simply went blank. So that's why I'm breaking this down. And I've seen many reports where people miss this. They miss things up on this matter. And that's why this video is very important so i don't forget in key informant interview like i said on the video in in that interview we don't ask question we simply raise probes and prompts please don't say respondent when you are doing k i i say interviewee you are the interviewer the person you are speaking to is an interviewee so don't say respondents we say respondent in questionnaire administration because they ask questions people respond in questionnaire but in in-depth interview, I mean key informant interview, and even in-depth interview, we don't say respondent, we say interviewee. Please use the right concept. That shows you are an expert. And you are the interviewer. And we don't ask questions. We say we prompt so people can talk freely. And when, they, when we prompt them, we probe if we need further information. This is the advantage of key informant interview, like other quality method of data collection. We are able to probe and ask further questions until we get where we want to get to in our in our in our data collection so probes and prompts are what we use in qualitative data we don't use questions that's why we don't have responding because people are not responding we're not asking them questions to respond we are only prompting them along what we have want and they respond and when we don't have enough information we probe them further so on your interview guide there should be no question mark basically speaking yeah we will have people at very high level Talking about questions on on qualitative data guide, no, it's probe. So you carry your issues on your on your interview guide as statements, and there must be no you must, there must be no leading question. This is very important. I didn't mention it in the video on the on the um, uh, idea. There must be no leading question. This is good. We are viewing this video now in line with that one. No leading question. You must not ask them a question that will lead them to yes or no. Or affirmative answer. You must at least ask them raise issues within the way they talk comprehensively. It's very important. So, and again, this inter key format interview interview must happen in a neutral place, a natural place, pre-selected with the with the interviewee, with your own approval. Meanwhile, you must be safe. Don't follow anybody to a place you are not safe. The two of you must agree on a natural, mutually convenient location. So, and there must not be any third party. So, there is no, there will be no third party effect that the interview will not free to talk, will not be free to talk. And it must be at a mutually agreed time that is convenient for both of you. It must not be at a, a place where, you know, you just, uh, a time where the interview is in a hurry or even you, you are in a hurry. No, it must be at a place that everybody is comfortable. And at a time that everybody is available.
If the interview is so much in a hurry, please excuse the individual and reschedule the interview. I hope you are getting it. And the interview must not be too lengthy, so that it should be an average of 45 to one and a half hours. You know, 45 minutes to one and a half hour. If it's too lengthy, it will be boring and you will, fag out, you will, you will be fagged out and you will fag out your interview. And it should not be too short to the extent that you don't have value or reasonably comprehensive data from that session. So, it, it, so but it, it, can be, it can be less than 45 minutes, it can be more than one and a half hour. But we are saying that that's the average. But don't let it be too lengthy and don't let it be too brief or too short that you don't have value for your work. So, uh, another point I want to make before I hand off this session is the fact that there are different types of inter in key information interview guide and key information interview. So, you can have structured, you can have semi-structured, and you can have unstructured. I don't advise structure. I don't advise unstructured. Because unstructured means you just raise the prompt, the individual start talking, and the two of you appear to be distinct. If you are not so experienced, I, you may not be able to get focused interview. And if it's too structured, it may become a questionnaire administration where you just continue to prompt the person, and the person wants to say things, and you, they just, you, you pigeonhole them in a straight jacket. But semi structured means you have, unlike unstructured, unstructured you have your points as prompts and probes. And you prompt the individual, the individual then becomes free to discuss, to, to, to respond, or may not respond. The individual then becomes free to engage with the prompt you have you have raised. And the person is not is not just too is not too controlled. But when you see that the individual is not talking along the line of your objectives, you can prompt them, you can probe them to, towards the direction that you think you want. Because don't forget, your, in, your interview must be, must be from your research question, based on your research design, within qualitative method. So your, your research question will form sections in your interview guide. And this is what is on this, uh, will, I mean, not question, your research questions will form sections in your interview guide, or your objectives will form sections in your interview guide. And it's from this, um, your research question that you, you will tease out prompts and probes and you must make sure that what the person is talking about answers your research questions so this is the logic it's not that just to just the talking in interview but they must talk to your predetermined research question and what will determine whether you use in key informant interview it depends on the kind of subject you want to unravel it depends on the kind of research you are doing which we, we determine. After you have done, for example, you can triangulate with questionnaire, you can triangulate with in-depth interview. But when you want more, more strategic, more important information from, you can say from the all from the horse's mouth, from the most important person, then you will use you will need key informant interview. Because this key informant interview then means that you are talking to the most important person on this matter. Until you talk to this most important person, then you cannot say that you have you have been able to gather valid and reliable data because this important person will help you to be able to to say okay yes i've heard from the most important person on this subject i can say now that my job is done and this is very key and you have to consider what are the things you have to consider you consider time do you have enough time to do this then do you have enough fun enough money to do this this is very important do you have enough capacity to be able to do this do you have the right person who is key to do this and this is very important you know you have to look at time you look at fund you look at your capacity because it's not easy then do you have access to that very important person if you got the important people are very difficult to reach you know because if you don't have access to the person how do, how do you assess that individual they are usually very important personalities they are usually very important person. At some time, access is a major problem in getting key information interview done. And now, if you now have the phone, if you have the time, if you have the capacity, if you have the access, that is fine. But it's very important because it also grants you legitimacy. You can't suit legitimacy. You know, you know, people will take your work seriously. When you say, well, I've spoken to this and so person on this matter, they will take you seriously. And you know, and it's very key for interview is very advantageous. In design, it's very flexible. You can manage 
the session in a way that you are able to move to the right, move to the left, move to the center, move forward, move backward, so that you can get your, your work done. Then it gives you opportunity to have a very detailed, very comprehensive information. This is very important. And again, it enables you to, to, to be able to have textual data. You record the voice, though with permission. You must give them key informed consent. They, you must, they must sign informed consent for you. I'll still drop a video in this slide. So you must get approval before you record their voices. So, but you will have access to voice and data you can transcribe later on. You know, so that you can use it to support your work. And people think that is so easy, but it's not. Thank you very much. And I'll see you in my next video. Subscribe to the channel.